Welcome back to the Saigon Report, and we're going to continue with our discussion of preferred enemy weapons used in the Vietnam era. Now what I have right here in my hands is a Kalashnikov style weapon. This is the RPK. Yes, there is an official Soviet pronunciation for RPK, but I don't speak Russian, so I'm not even going to try. Let's just call this an RPK. Now the RPK looks like an AK-47. It does for a purpose for a reason. Mikhail Kalishnikov was again the engineer who worked on the RPK in the 1950s. Now those of you out there watching say that looks like a 30 round banana clip. It looks like an AK-47 magazine. That's because it is. The RPK was designed to be a SAW. S-A-W. S-A-W stands for Squad Automatic Weapon. In the world's military there have been lots and lots of machine guns light machine guns, medium machine guns, and heavy machine guns. But what the Soviet Union desired in the 1950s was a light machine gun that was man portable and that was not necessarily a crew served weapon. A crew served weapon is one that requires two or three or more people to operate. With the RPK or a saw, one man can operate it. So what Kalishnikov and his team did was they designed a light machine gun or a saw based upon the standard Kalishnikov action and they built it around again the 762 by 39 millimeter cartridge. Why is that important? Because the people carrying the saw or the RPK would be mixed in with your normal riflemen who were carrying AK-47s. Now the standard magazine or drums that fed these were either 40 round magazines or 75 round drums but the 30 round magazines would work. Say you are an RPK gunner and you're out there and you've expended all your ammunition, but your gun is still working. Where can you get more? You can get more ammunition from all the riflemen that are around you and you can keep the gun up and running. Now, what is different about this gun? This particular model of RPK has a folding stock and it is designated as a paratrooper version. The standard infantry versions would have a wooden rear stock and a wooden forend. What else did they put on there to make this a saw or a light machine gun? There's a carrying handle, which is put in the center so the gun balances. They have a heavy 20 inch barrel because this is a fully automatic gun and you need a heavy barrel for a fully automatic gun. And of course, what's very obvious on the front is the standard bipod. So you can tell an RPK from an AK by looking closely, long barrel, thick barrel. Some of the RPKs had carrying handles and some of them didn't, but this one does. And of course the addition of a bipod. Now how much did the RPK weigh? Standard weight for an RPK empty, 10.6 pounds. So obviously it's about three pounds heavier than your standard AK. And of course it could be fed with any kind of AK magazine that shoots 762 by 39. 30 round, 40, and 75 round drums. The sights on the RPK are designed very much like those of the AK-47. The front sight can be drifted for windage and adjusted for elevation, and the rear sight can also be adjusted for elevation and windage. Now the rear sight actually goes out much farther. It goes out to 1,000 meters, and that is because according to the manual, the RPK is effective in the field from 100 to 1,000 meters. The Soviet Army put the RPK into service in 1961. And just like the AK-47, very shortly after the Russians started using this gun, all of their allies started making their own versions. This particular model is a paratrooper version, but the gun is the RPK Squad Automatic Weapon.